Good morning, everybody. It's Death Adder at the Death Shop. Not in ninja form. We're back in the farmer form here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful autumn day out here. But it also means that it's a very special day for several reasons. One, welcome to video 600. I'm going to put this out as my 600th video on the Death Shop. So, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on another milestone. Can, uh, can't believe it, you know, doing this just for fun. So, 600 videos haven't really started until like about three years ago. So, it's pretty nice. Uh, reason number two is today is what I call batting down the hatches day. It's time to, uh, time to take whatever harvest I got left in the garden, take care of it, and uh, we'll be buying some... Uh, some materials to cover everything up so I'm going to be doing a lot of digging today get everything I possibly can out of the ground so we're talking the potatoes are coming out we're talking the tomatoes any tomatoes left are going to get pulled because frost is coming very shortly and uh, well everything's going to die <laughs> pretty much it's been a decent year of gardening uh, it's a little a little tragic uh, that I uh, my second round of strawberries had to happen at the time that I was on vacation and that my also that <laughs> if you've gone through this whole entire year that I wasn't 100% sure when my black raspberries were going so I kind of screwed that pooch didn't I <laughs> anyway I have a bag here for potatoes I have a bag here for tomatoes and I have a cooler here for the leeks because it's going to need a a little bit more room for those guys. I'm not going to get them all today. Actually, let's take the shell, the spade, fork, actually, up part of the way through the clover, which this is going to get probably a hack down before winter. It's a little tall in the front and the back here, and it's mid tall, but. It depends on when snow comes, I could let it go, but I think the good thing to do is to take it out. But as you can see, uh, I've been out here like twice since vacation, mostly to pick strawberries. As you can see, the cold rains and storms that we've just had have been pretty much kicking everything out and everything's turned into fall colors. Hey, let's go take a look at that dahlia, by the way. This one threw up the second flower. Nice, beautiful dahlia there. Not bad for a small plant that uh, barely, uh, barely came through. And the other thing I need to do is chop too because that blueberry is not going to appreciate being encroached by the uh, raspberries that just will not stop. Look at how tall those things got. And there's still berries on those things too. I was hoping that the uh, birds flying through going for winter would eat them, but. Well, you know, it is what it is, is what they like to say. So, we call it as it is. It is what it is. <laughs> See, looking over here, we've got mostly oranges. You know, I've never had fried green tomatoes, but I'm still on this one plant. I'm almost thinking about doing it. I'm going to take any one that's pretty close. We'll wash them all when they're in the house. This one fell off. We'll see what Heather says about fried green tomatoes. Hey, look at this. Yellow Romas. <laughs> we'll take them. Ooh, those actually feel like a little cold, so maybe they did get frosted last night. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll see what Heather says. Pull up a recipe for it. But yeah. I think maybe we did get frost last night because it does feel a little on the cold side down there. Come over here. Check the one that fell off on its own. Hey, it's got a bad spot right there, so we'll pop it up there. Apparently, something was trying to eat the cantaloupe. Here's my big tragedy here. You know, I had some nice cantaloupes on here, but they got a little too close to the ground, so they all started melding and something ate it. So 
I don't want to say it's those pesky deer. So next year, we're going to do a lot more to destroy the deer. <clears throat> and that one's got a big hole in it too, so... I did get two cantaloupes. I had all my cantaloupes this year. And they were softball size. Heather and I did enjoy them, but... Something else enjoyed the rest, as you can tell. There's a little topple on my stuff here, so... I'm really desperate to get some food. They must have needed it much more than me. Alright. Good news is, is we still got leaks up here. Like I said, I haven't been out here much because of the thing, so we got wildflowers growing. <laughs> We've got raspberries on the wrong side of the fence. And see, and I left them these raspberries here, and they didn't take my offering. Cheeky little bastards. <laughs> The good news is, is that when we did our blueberries, we got all our blueberries off. And Heather, for my birthday, made an excellent sauce to cheesecake from them, so I'm very appreciative of that. So this one here, didn't quite get one. See, these ones still look like they're just getting to the blue point where they're ready to be ripened, which is kind of crazy. I'm going to try this one out. Very nice blueberry flavor, even with my piece of big red in my mouth. So we did not get our second set of uh, green onions. And we only got one lettuce that came up on this side. But we did get a bunch of grass for some reason. I don't know how the hell we got grass through here. Because there is no grass anywhere, so it must have picked up on my shoes. But I don't know. My crocs I wear flat, so... They don't pick up much, and I haven't been letting the grass get tall enough this year to actually seed in those parts. I mean, this part up here is just because I have to bring the, the uh, trimmer out to do that. Look at that here. <laughs> Probably a plastic construction made from across the way. Toss it down here for now. I got other stuff to do. Tommies come off of here. These ones are the small ones on this other side. <clears throat> I'm going to ask Heather about fried green tomatoes. If she'd be willing to try and make some. Because if she is, I'll pull all the tomatoes. I've got quite a few green ones on here still. But this, uh, these are Johnny Come Lately's this year. That one's split. That's weird. Never seen a split tomato before. At least not on the plant, anyway. Anything with color. Go ahead and pop it. It's still a bit on the soft side out here. Like I said, it's been a lot of rain. Look at this. Actually, had a few green beans come up. Not really enough to do anything for. And I'll tell you what, as soon as I pull everything, the deer are going to love it, so... <laughs> They'll love me for that. That's okay. It's like... Trust me, the thing that I want most out of the garden, truthfully, every year is the strawberries and the raspberries. Now, next year it'll be blueberries because the blueberry, one blueberry bush will be producing very well. That's <laughs> down <laughs> Alright, so, I've gotten more than my fair share of strawberries, and that one's a little over. Go ahead and give it to the top of here. Probably getting the tomatoes everywhere. Boy, you can see the weeds just came right out from that little corner. Despite all the pulling and spraying, not not the bad spray. I still refuse to use the Roundup. I won't do it because I do not want. I don't want deadly produce. <laughs> so.
All right, I think this is all of the mostly right. Uh -huh. strawberries down here. I'm just wondering if I actually should pick or not. I'm going into town today and I'll pick up the supplies to cover everything up and pick all the fruit off. Everything else will get covered. I'm still trying to figure out myself why why everything was really blooming so late this year. Because I mean we're what? Let's see, we're very mid-October, getting on the other side of October, and there's still, like, there's still blossoms up there. <laughs> that in itself is insane. All right, so here we're going to see whether we got a travesty or whether we got a success here, because if you remember, I left potatoes in the ground for a long time. I'm not sure about how well these ones are going to go, just for the mere fact that, um, just for the mere fact that, yeah, they probably were ready like two months ago, so we'll see what happens. We pull them up, for all I know, they might have all gotten eaten. All I know is I have a friend who used to work with me, i getting back in contact with soon, his name's Ian. Yeah, he's looking to do a garden because everybody <laughs> when they hear about my garden for some reason wants to do a garden. It's not the best in the world, but but he's got a rototiller and I might take him up on his offer because he told me that he would let me use it. So here's where you might get a flash of my my chubby belly. <laughs> We'll, we'll see how things work out here, guys. They may, they may not. <clears throat> but we definitely uh, had plants here. Now, uh, yeah, see? This right here, it's on the top. It's been washed off. Anything that's been washed off, the sun has seen, it turns green, it is poisonous. So, toss those away. So even if I just get stuff that works great, cubed for potatoes, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to begin with. So, we will see how we do. Probably end up speeding through this too. Anything that's very close, I'll I'm gonna throw because, like I said, I'd rather uh, stay healthy, especially these times. I just gotta see if I can figure out where I stopped at when I was digging before. It's gonna be pretty easy. It's gonna be down with the spading fork. have to figure out where I stopped at. Well, I see some on this side. Oh, hey, look at this. There we go. And not only that, but it's a halfway decent size on that one. So the one here, I'm looking to make sure it's not, like, it's, it's a little on the soft side, a little on the wet side, so we're making sure we don't have so we'll get to the leeks in a bit here. <laughs> I smell roasted leek and potato soup in my future. Oh yeah, here we go. See, that's why I left this open, open pit on the one side so I can see 
There we go, right there. Boom. Well, well, well. What do we have here? We got potatoes. And we got little teeny tiny seed potatoes. <laughs> the ones that are... ones that are that small aren't worth keeping, but I'll tell you what. Let me show you a little something in comparison. These little guys here, I would have planted down there and ended up getting those two big potato plants. With. And we'll check those out after we check them out. Let's keep going. Whew -hoo. Okay, so pretty happy so far. It looks like everything that stayed in the ground is perfectly viable still, so that's awesome. And it didn't look like anything tried to attack them because there are things that will eat potatoes. I think it's because mostly the slugs were after my strawberries. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, the thing that I want to do though is that the potatoes didn't do quite as good as I wanted them to up here. So I, my whole goal is to try and get as many of these potatoes out of here as possible so they don't sprout for next year. If I can do that, next year I can put something else up here that might appreciate the, uh, the uh, exact conditions that are in here. It's a half a chance it might actually throw the leaks up here because it's a little too wet for the potatoes. That means I'll have to find a place for potatoes if I want to grow potatoes. But I haven't decided yet. I mean, after all, the things I have decided are berries, of course. <laughs> and the berries are going to get a permanent spot in my garden. I might try a set of corn again, just not in this spot, because this spot did not work out well for it. Hey, look at this one. I'll take a little boxy. <laughs> so we got all these little seed potatoes. That's kind of funny. Take out this old one. This, this old, ooh. Look at that baby. Oh, yeah. Not too shabby. See, those are the kind that are, uh, that are good for something. See, about as small as these guys right here, about as small as I keep. I mean, that's borderline right there. But uh, cream peas and potatoes, or you can put them whole in chicken pot pie. potatoes to your chicken pot pie and make them old potatoes. Oh yeah. That's some good eating there. So never mind me here. I'm wearing my Crocs today, which are the flat bottoms, of course. So I will get dirt in my socks, but that's okay. Yes, I'm wearing Crocs with socks, guys. Please don't kill me for that. <laughs> but it's just too cold of a day not to wear socks at any. Soil. See how far up these went. I can see the roots from thistles right there. Those guys are going bye bye too. It's been a while since I've been out here, so I'm expecting some horse show. <laughs> but so far, I'm not unhappy with what I see. That's for sure. See, here's what we mean by those thistles. Look at how long that root is. That one little, tiny little thistle. Look at pain in the butt. As I showed you mine. Whoop. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Say sorry, baby. The ladies might have caught a glimpse of my butt. There's another green one right on top. Like I said, all green ones that are on the top have to, have to go. Don't want to take that chance. After all, a potato, like a tomato. <laughs> Good turn the camera. No focusing on my butt. So 
here's the here's the things we're gonna keep though. Now this is something odd right here. Take a look at this. Do you think that's a potato runner? Or do you think that that's a uh, do you think that that's a uh, uh, a uh, runner for a uh, thistle that went through the potato? What I'm gonna do I'm gonna do something funny here. I know I'm not really looking to grow potatoes up here, and they don't really grow awesome on the edge here. But since this one has this big, really big, weird, long root, I'm going to bury this. We'll come back next year, see what happens, just as an experiment. So I experiment with all sorts of stuff in this garden. See, I really don't know what will grow out here. I mean, I'm growing potatoes because I know that potatoes, you know, eastern Washington and Idaho are good for potatoes. And I'm right smack dab in the midst of all that police earthworm growing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you ever see the thing on the police earthworm? Big, huge, huge, huge record setting earthworm. See, but this is why I don't think that it's potato. I think that it's this one right here. Another one of these guys right here. It's going up. That might actually be grass. That'd be sucky if that was grass growing through there. <laughs> I'm going all the way up though, even though I didn't actually throw potatoes there doesn't mean that you can't grow them. Now this one here is already starting to grow something out the top, so that's a no-gooder. Once they start growing, that's a sign that you should get rid of them. I'm going to tear anything out that's right at the edge. It's anything out that's right at the edge is likely grass. Grass in the garden, no bueno. Of course, it's going to migrate towards the garden because we got all the good nutrients here. All right. Now we're going to give you a nice little plant. Hopefully, it won't get too dirty. All right. So, oh, hey. Right off the bat. Oh, well, well, look at that. See, the best part is, is that all of these, all I have to do is dry them. Which will be easy in the house right now, because I have the heater actually turned on. The humidity is actually very quite low. I'm going to go out and get a humidifier later. But, uh, it'll dry those out in no time, so. See, if I want to show you everything here, I'd better hurry. Either that or I'm going to have to click this off and uh, come back after after I've dug this whole plot. I mean, it's basically going to be the same thing here, you know. Just, just kind of do the uh, whole spading fork, come up, find your gems. <laughs> it's kind of like treasure hunting, right? In you go. <clears throat> Anything that's too small gets thrown out. Kind of is like treasure hunting, you know, with the gems. I haven't done one of those in a while because this year, you know, well, with Corona taking out most of the summer, that's prime time to go over to, uh, I mean, I suppose I could have bought a bag from them, had them send it, but what's the fun in that? I like going out and getting the ones myself, digging them up. There's a few places where you can dig sapphires. I do want to, in the future, plan a trip back to Crater of Diamonds. Now that I know a little bit more about the whole thing and what I'm looking for and how to look for it, I want to take another shot at finding an American diamond. <laughs> but who knows when that's going to be, you know? I have troubles going up to Canada for wine we run out of that, which will probably be next year, but but still, that's kind of sad. You can't even go across the border. So that's why I tell everybody, you know, that we got the election coming up, and my vote is going to be less of a vote for somebody as it is a vote against somebody. 
because there's a certain someone who's screwed all of America over pretty much that it's time for them to go bye bye. <laughs> So they had their time, they screwed it up, their opportunities, so it's time to let somebody else have the job. That's about all I'll say on it. <clears throat> See, I'm just mad because I can't go to Canada. <laughs> and that the world's really, we've become the laughing stock of the world, so. See, that one had a little green to it, and it was a little bit closer to the top, so I'm going to toss it. I got a ton in this one, though. Like I said, you know, this was an experiment. And actually, this was in last year's, some of last year's potatoes, along with some, uh, some ones from the store. So these really shouldn't have been, <laughs> should have been growing, according to most people. <laughs> but, but they do. <laughs> so you want the proof right here? don't get you exactly the, the biggest, best ones of the thing, but that's because they don't put like 52 billion gallons of fertilizer in. Come on, man. I try to do things natural. <laughs> Keep the bad stuff out. But... Alright, since this is taking a while, I'm going to go ahead and cut you off and we'll do peace. Peace together as the airplanes are flying over. So all right, we're back, and this is what the plot looks like. Fully dug out, torn most of the grass and roots out. And yeah, there's something on the top here. I found out that that experimental potato actually had a stock of grass growing right through it. I found a couple more up top, and when I pulled, the root came right through. So they grew right through the potato. Can you believe that? Wow. Anyway, this is what we got. Hmm. Nothing super large, but that's perfect size for pot pie. And to just do a couple cuts to carve up for your normal hash browns or potato cubes, I should say. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna come down here. And I don't care if I set this on top of where the cantaloupes were because the cantaloupes are done. Here we got a couple plants that grew from those little seeds over winter. We're going to see what we got there. So wish me luck. I find a place to get you though. I think we're great. Here this time. Probably look at. It's going to be a little slanted, but I yeah, should do. I'm going to go from a little bit back just in case. Stuff's all dying on the top, which means that it's time to go get them. See, I knew when I planted basil here, and then all of a sudden this stuff started growing up, I was in trouble. So I was like, there's no way that that's basil. So, here come the potatoes. <laughs> and hey, what do you know? The stuff that comes from the tiny ones produces bigger potatoes. Either that or it's just the fact that they have more yard to work with. But it's kind of funny how that works sometimes. I'll pull this puppy up. Take a look at this, man. Those are some nice ones right there. And <laughs> this is funny too. Okay, so I pull these potatoes up, right? I can smell, I can smell basil, which is what I planted here but did not grow, so it's kind of funny. I wonder if the potatoes will end up smelling or tasting like basil. Maybe some sort of weird crossbreed, wouldn't it? Let's see how many we got and how far they went down. I've seen these go down pretty far. But you know what? Just a couple big ones. You know, that equals a bunch of the small ones. So, And not only that, but those are good for other stuff. Not just the aforementioned. Well, it didn't grow into this because this is all that uh, didn't, didn't crumble. 
that's all it makes. Really nice stuff though. It's really nutrient packed. You can see with all the mica and stuff in it. It's got a lot of good things. So look at this. One teeny 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 tiny plant. Absolutely huge potatoes. Teeny tiny plant, huge potatoes. Fortunately, that one's green right there. So if I was going to replant, this would be the one right here. But I don't know, because it's a, I mean, that green is already coming up and everything, you know, I doubt it would stay over winter. I wouldn't want it in this spot, though, because this spot gets too much rain. Maybe up in the corner. Maybe this one will be my experiment. I'll go put it back where I was going to put the experimental potato. That was actually grass going through it, so. So we just went way down and planted it in the soil. That's uh, right in the very center of my of the uh, fencing right where I kind of pushed back on it and made a little hole in between the fence so we get very good drainage there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you never know, like I say. Let's so do all these crazy experiments. Just to see what grows, what doesn't grow. Look at this. Ooh. See, that was the main base right there. I think that was the main potato that it grew off of. Just a tiny, tiny little guy. What will we get? Well, we would have gotten five big potatoes. Holy cow. It's the biggest one yet. Let's see. And that's why I didn't tear these out and put the... Uh, put the basil back in because I knew that over the time of the gardening season these puppies there's some of that stuff I put in there, those pork vines a long time ago yeah over the growing season if they started out in there and overwintered those are going to be some strong plants that will give you some really great stuff and it looks like over winter is pretty much the way to go here, so I'm thinking that I'll probably do, I'll probably leave the upper part exactly as it is and uh, just fill up the one side with extra dirt next year and we'll plant leeks over winter and see what happens. Because these potatoes, and if the leeks last year were any indication, we're, uh, we're in for some good times. Because you're not going to believe this. Look at this. Dun dun dun. See, we'll probably have to eat these ones fast because it's the right temperature, so they want to die up, so. This one here, I got some sunlight, you can tell. I might put him in the, uh, might put him in the experimental over there. Give me two experimental potatoes. Shoots, if they turn out as good as this, then, well, maybe three <laughs> with that one. That's a double, double, double champion. Chris Jericho, right? <laughs> look at this, though, I mean, look at all these very nice sized potatoes. Not only that, but keep them cool, keep them dry. You will have, I'm serious here, you will have a nice set of potatoes for your kitchen. Well, well into the fall months. Whoa, this was a mutant. Look at that mutated and everything and it's all stuck onto one so we will have some experimental potatoes it looks like that one I'm just gonna toss up to the to the pile so 
small plants, big potatoes. Look at this one here. This is a huge plant. Oh, wow. Look at that. And it is viable. There we go. Full hand size. Never thought you'd see that, huh? Say, not on my show. <laughs> Say, hell of a 600th episode, huh? <laughs> All right, we got to check underneath here, though. We may or may not have more. I wouldn't expect too many more, considering how huge that puppy was. Let's find out. Turn her over. Nope. That's exactly it. I can't be unhappy about that at all. Shoots with those ones there. Let's lift this bag. That's at least 15, maybe 20. 15 to 20 pounds. Not bad. I'm gonna go plant these puppies up there. Say, okay, experimental garden coming up. We'll do your front row potatoes. We'll give it a little barrier. <clears throat> Yeah, all right, so front row potatoes. They'll probably grow right onto the uh, right onto the barrier. That's some sort of haul there. <laughs> I still have the leeks to go here, including the one that <laughs> you're in the middle of the cantaloupe. I left that one because it was over winter. I might not get all of the leeks though, because leeks, their expiration date starts as soon as you pick them. It'll last a little bit longer than the store, but not that much longer. So I'll talk to Heather, see what she says she wants to do with them. And I hear that uh, she's thinking about a roasted leek and a bacon pizza. That sounds delicious. It'll go great with caprese salad. So we'll see what she says. We'll be back in a bit. Gotta hit the right button. Alrighty, so we're back. And I talked to Heather. And she said, Yes, we are having roasted leek and bacon pizza. So we're gonna go ahead and come up here and we're gonna take care of those. What in the world is that? Oh, it's the label to my pole. Yeah, it looks like I'm thinking deer tried to get in here because the net came all the way down. We're probably trying to nuzzle up and eat the eat what was there, but uh, <laughs> that's what nets are for. And those four-legged freaks did enough damage on the green beans this year, so so we would hope for some sun to do up the tomatoes. Yeah, wasn't 100% sure about fried green tomatoes myself, and <laughs> she said. She said, uh, <laughs> when I asked her, she kind of went, mm. you know, yeah, I know, not into eating green stuff either, really. I mean, unless it's green to begin with, but yeah. All right, so let's get us some good leaks here, and then we'll run away for the day. 
Glad I came out to the garden today. Had a little bit of a headache. But that's because this dry weather that we had recently. It may be wet out here, but when you turn on the uh, air conditioning, turn it up to heat, and especially where I work too, it dries the air out completely, and you're just like dying. <laughs> but uh, had nosebleeds for the first time in probably about 10 years, and it was due to how warm it was, or not how warm, but how dry it was. I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we were uh, over at the ocean, you know. And then we came back home, and then it's all dry, 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 dry. Right, let's see if we can get this spot. I'm going to go around and make sure that we can take a look and see what we're doing. Oh yeah, that should be all right. I'm wondering what came in and what was eating those. I wonder if the deer were eating those. If they were doing that too, then I'm really going to be pissed. I will take these down, mostly for safety's sake. It's like I said, batting down the hatches days here. Okay, this guy right here, this guy right here are probably the two biggest ones we got. So. Ugh. Hoping for a good set of white. Hoping. We'll see. Because last year they weren't super deep. And I think that I put some more soil over the top of them this year, so we'll find out. Hey, not bad. It's not like the long whites you get in the store, but they plant those in like super, super sand. And I don't know what they do. You know? But I'll tell you what, I guarantee these taste better. Guaranteed. Don't have to be that uh, Cajun chef to guarantee that. So we're going to toss some of this grass. Whoa. It inadvertently had a little, uh, had a little friend. Hey, so the perils of going on vacation not charging all your batteries <laughs> is that <laughs> you might be doing a video. Not barely any stuff left or power left so yep here we go we're gonna finish up the leaks real quick here get those ready to go already smells beautifully a leak out here all you gotta do is pop one of these and it starts smelling oh get that now you need garlicky smell <sighs> flavor of leeks though is extraordinary and I'm a little worried because there's raspberry encroaching here. <laughs> Raspberries won't quit. There we go. Number two. That looks delicious. Now after I get done plopping a bunch of these ones, I'm going to go hose off the hose them off. That's why I'm putting them in a cooler the garden hose which it's going to get its hatches battened down here in another couple days as soon as I'm done with it anyway because yeah it's never good to leave your hoses out over the winter so look at this this had a small one with it see that is called a ramp <laughs> It does have a flavor a lot like a green onion, except it's a little bit more hearty. If I had a bunch more of these, I would do a bunch of these. I don't know, she can add it to the pizza and that'll be awesome. Let's see, what else do I want to pull here? Because I'm not going to pull all of them because we don't need all of them right now. And these will take frost, no problem. That one's a little bit thinner. Get a lot more white to it, though. It's because it was in an area that drained down a little bit more. So we're almost there, guys. There's a couple little extra ramps here. 
It's okay. I'll make a delicious pizza. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna get the one that's down here. I really don't care about busting up these. Uh... <laughs> So the cantaloupes are done. There's this wonderful leak hiding in the middle of them. Ta da! And what do you call it? One more good one. Let's see here. Which one do I want to take? How about the end ones? I'll make it easy when I come back over. Oh, <laughs> there are actually a couple small ones here. Actually, I had plenty of ramps to go around. Those aren't bad at all. There's four of them right there. I actually want a real one. So... And that's two gallons. I know I don't have a lot of time. Because it's about to go out on me. only had 25 minutes. Or 25%, I should say. I don't want to do those because there's three of them, so I think I'll do this one right here. That way I can get rid of the rest of them. There we go. There we are. Yeah, look at that. Ta-da! That'll be more than enough. Look at this root on this. I came from over there. Oh, sorry. Didn't quite catch that. <laughs> That's dark woody root. But yeah, look at all the baby. These guys will have to get plucked. Just look at... I don't know why. Hey, green, raspberries, middle of October. I mean, we even got some ones that are ripening, and that's just weird. Galloway yeah, fly. See, I did leave these here for the birds to chomp on. It looks like they started to have a go with them, so that's good. So I don't really want rotting fruit on my bushes. But... All right, we're gonna have to wrap this up, but before we do, you know we gotta come up here and take a look, because the dahlias are still going strong because they're fall. They've still got plenty of buds there. And that one bush from Bouchard is beautiful. 10-year-old seeds. You believe that? 10-year-old seeds. And then this one here that was planted this year has just the most amazing, most amazing flowers. Very happy. And then we got the white, and we got the the nice yellow with just the standard dahlia configuration there. And of course, you know, pretty much end of season for artichokes. We got one more right there. I guess I'll try and let it grow until it's time to pack it all up. I don't know what I'm doing with the spot next year. I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is move the artichokes where the potatoes were next year. And that'll give them everything that they need to grow properly. Hey, step out of the shop soon. I'll catch you later, man. <laughs> As they gear up the hoe, they're getting their uh, sprinklers winterized. Mine have already been winterized, with the exception of my garden sprinkler, because that comes off my hose. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you later. I just have to batten down the hatches, like I say, get a few things to put over the top of the garden, make my last few plops for the uh, leeks here, and maybe some tomatoes and maybe a couple strawberries. That's about as far as we're going this year. But the garden will see us next year. And I still do have those two big, huge cherry trees over there that went crazy this year to prune. And I'll prune them before next garbage takeout so that way my green and my clean green uh, can have a little extra stuff to go with it but literally i have not watered since like after vacation because uh, mother nature has been doing dump on us so <laughs> everybody hope your gardens are doing well i'll catch you later i'm gonna plant a few things probably i'll probably plant some leeks somewhere probably not there because I like to rotate those, maybe in here, maybe down here with between these tomatoes. I'll plant some overwinter leeks and see how they turn out. Because they're generally better. <laughs> anyway, I've gone on long enough. 
for everybody who well everybody who subscribed in the past 10 years and change well 11 years now I thank you very much thanks for getting me to video 600 and you know I mean just the few comments I get every now and then are enough for me to continue to go ahead and do videos but stay tuned guys now that we've got video 600 in the books because it was so close when I did vacation the vacation videos are coming and then after the vacation videos right on back to gaming we're gonna have 42 days of seven days to die with carnage chaos Doug my friend <laughs> and I hope you guys will enjoy those we're doing raw footage unless uh unless we have people tell us to speed it up but we're gonna do raw footage one hour at a time one day at a time from a little past 4 a.m. to a little past 4 a.m. except on horde night so you can see all the loot anyway whoo happy 600 guys we'll catch you later bye